Good morning folks, a very warm welcome indeed to this dawn service on Easter morning and I pray that you've had a good week and that if you're up watching this on the live stream that um, you are up and ready to worship for Christ has risen, he has risen indeed. I'm Ross Blackman, minister at Hamilton Old Parish Church of Scotland and usually in Hamilton here we would have two services on Easter morning, one in the Old Parish itself uh, as the original parish church for the town, but also one over in Chatler Row. Now, obviously, it's un we're unable to meet under the current circumstances um, in either location directly, but I hope that you're meeting at home, maybe from the comfort of your own home, you're having an opportunity to worship today. And whether it's on the live stream or on a later recording, I pray that it will be blessed to you. Uh, we have uh, a hymn, we have a reading, and just a few short comments and a prayer. It's just a short act of worship this fine uh, Easter morning. So I pray that you'll be blessed by that, as it obviously replaces the uh, the daily short webcast that I've been doing each day as well, as we wait just an extra half an hour for our normal time for our dawn service. So I pray that that's blessed to you and for the whole town as we come together to worship. Let's start, first of all, singing a hymn that's probably very well known, it's I Danced in the Morning, hymn 404, and hopefully the words will come up on the screen and you'll have a chance opportunity to uh, sing that together. Hymn 404, I Danced in the Morning, the Lord of the Dance. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, and our reader today is Amanda Strachan. Uh, it's Luke chapter 9, verses 18 to 27. So if you're following along with that in your own Bibles, it's the third Gospel in the New Testament. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, and verse, picking up the reading in verse Mark 18, verses 18 to 27. Once when Jesus was praying in private, and his disciples were with him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say I am? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, 
and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, God's Messiah. Jesus strictly warned them not to tell this to anyone, and he said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Thank you for that reading, Amanda. Very much appreciated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for the many ways in which you bless us, the ways in which you take care of us, even in the circumstances that we currently find ourselves in. We pray that we might bless your holy name for a Christ who has come to this earth and been amongst us, who's walked with us, who has suffered in every way by way of temptation and also trial in ways such as we ourselves suffer, and, but also has known the joys of life as well, even as we know also joys. We thank you for his sacrifice for our lives, for our souls. We pray as we come before you this morning, we come before you with a renewed sense of who Christ is, all that he has done for us, who we are standing before you as children of God, but particularly redeemed for the sake of Christ. For all that we do wrong, we pray that you might forgive us. For all our mismanagement of this planet, we ask for your forgiveness. For all our wrong decisions in life, individually and corporately, we ask for your forgiveness. That your Holy Spirit might empower us to do better with our lives and as we face this Easter morning we pray Heavenly Father that we will look upon Christ afresh and looking upon him in that fresh and new way even with the start of a new day we might find ourselves loving him the more loving you Heavenly Father the more and loving one another that little bit more even as we love ourselves we give you the praise and the glory for all that is for all of life, for all of life's experience. We thank you for the hope that you give us through Christ, not just for this life, but for the life to come. We pray that as we worship you this morning, that we might do so, glorifying you in all that we think upon, all that we meditate upon, and all that we consider in our hearts as well as our minds, as we even bring before you the concerns of our hearts at this time for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, for all our loved ones, for our neighbour. And even as we bring th all things together in your name, we pray that you would hear us for the sake of Christ and even in those words with which he taught us to pray, even as he intercedes for us day and night, but asking you that you might hear us, Heavenly Father, as we pray together, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I want to just spend a moment with the text that we've considered there in Luke chapter 9 and just think about how that might apply to us even this morning in the unusual circumstances that we find ourselves in. Unusual in so many different ways in that so many of us are in our own homes rather than the church, either be at the dawn service, or maybe a little bit later in our usual services. Or whatever it is we occupy ourselves with on a Sunday day far less a Sunday morning, particularly an Easter morning. 
Someone made the comment to me earlier in the week that some people were touting this as just being a bank holiday. Well, it's more than just a bank holiday, of course. It's, it's Easter. And for the Christian, that means a lot. We remember our Lord in so many different ways. But often we remember him in respects of Monday, Thursday, the start of the Last Supper, all that communion time that we, we reflect on time and time again. And depending on our practice and our tradition, that might be on a weekly basis, it might be on a monthly basis, several times a year, maybe even only once a year. But as we reflect on that, we remember what Christ has done for us in the breaking of bread, in the breaking of his body, in the pouring of wine, and the pouring out of his blood for our souls. But these circumstances are not normal. They're quite, quite different. As I was thinking about that passage of scripture that we look at uh, this morning in Luke chapter 9, there was Jesus beforehand telling his disciples what had to befall him during Holy Week. And I just want to pick it up, up a verse of that reading again. In Luke chapter 9, verse 22, Christ said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And that, of course, is what we celebrate this weekend. We're glad to be able to celebrate that opportunity to remember Christ until he comes. But these are unusual situations. I was minded as a thought about the, the situation we find ourselves in uh, of, of a film I saw many, many years ago. Actually, it came out in, I think, 1974, Young Frankenstein with Gene Wilder. Um, it was a hilarious film, I felt, particularly at the time, particularly for the performance of Monty Feldman, who uh, played Igor, or Igor, as he pronounced his name, uh, in that particular film. And there's one scene in particular that, that struck me in that, in that everything's gone wrong with this, this new Frankenstein monster that Frankenstein... Frederick Frankenstein, that you know, Gene Wilder plays, um, has created this monster, this, this awful situation, and he's wondering why it's gone wrong. He's wondering about you know, what could have actually caused this, and, and it seems to be maybe it's the brain of a monster that's the problem, and so he, he interrogates e. Igor to ask to just where did he get this brain from? Which, which one was it? He'd asked for a genius, but this doesn't seem to be the case. And he said... Um, the, the brain of guy was, was, was Abby somebody. Abby somebody? Yes. Um, uh, Abby normal. Abby normal. And certainly was an abnormal brain that the monster got. And today we face abnormal circumstances in all that we're facing in life. These are not normal circumstances. We may maybe wonder whether or not we'll go back to some form of normal. But didn't Jesus' disciples fall into that self-same kind of situation? When, when Christ died, their friend, their master, they were immediately plunged into abnormal situations, abnormal circumstances. And that didn't get much better when Easter morning rose either, because the unthought of had come up, even though Christ had told them that this was what must happen. They didn't really truly believe Christ would be resurrected. All that they had experienced under his tutelage, they didn't believe that this extraordinary event would take place. The world was never the same again for them. It changed their perspective on life. It changed the way that they behaved. It changed the way that they spent their life. And they spent it from, for Christ from that point onwards, even as they remembered him time and time again until he came, and in their case, as he came for them, when they passed from this life to the next, and as he continued to walk with them in all that they experienced. I'm particularly struck about this because I wonder how it's going to affect us going forward. In the immediate aftermath of Easter, today and going on, but also when this lockdown that we're experiencing is, is eventually overcome, because it will be overcome at some point. Perhaps we'll still be in abnormal circumstances. Maybe it'll take a long while to get back to what we would consider as being something that's normal, if ever it returns to what was familiar again. And maybe the next words of Christ to his disciples, and by extension to us, are also relevant in this case. 
In verse 23, Jesus continues to say to them all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. As we've been following the Holy Week services this week, following Christ, are we going to continue following him? Taking up our cross daily, taking up that unusual circumstance, even in all the unusualness of what we're currently experiencing. Are we going to be a peculiar people for the Lord? Are we going to spend ourselves for him in whatever way we possibly can, just as his disciples did in that first century? I pray that we'll find a place to do that. I pray that in all these unusual circumstances that we've faced, it will have changed us, but for the better. That we'll have a different perspective on life. And through that different perspective, so hopefully influenced by Christ and what he's done for us, that we will never look at life the same way again. We might be a peculiar people bought out for Christ. We might be viewing things as being abby normal. But in all that we experience, in all that we go forward with, we would put him first in all that we endeavour to do for him and for each other. Going for. So this Easter morning we are reminded once again that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Now this morning uh, uh, we are unlikely to be having communion services in the traditional kind of sense, depending on our theology around what communion is or, or a love feast. But I would encourage you, even this morning, to at some point maybe take some bread take some wine or something similar to it, things that might for you represent the bread and the wine, the body and blood of Christ, and remember him even this morning as he has risen. He has come. He's come for you. He has come for me. And this Easter morning, we remember that again. And so with these things in mind, let's have a final word of prayer and then a blessing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in what you've provided for us in Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we give thanks to you for all that you have done for us in giving your life, in sacrificing yourself in so many different ways. We remember you until you come, whether that be that you come into our lives in a powerful way and a manifestation of the Spirit, whether it is that you come into our lives by returning for us before taking us to glory or whether you return in our lives in that great big end of times uh, scene that is painted in scripture a number of times but particularly in the book of Revelation. In whatever way it is that you come into our experience Lord we accept you and we willingly declare this day to be your day. A Lord's day, an Easter day. We thank you for what you've done for us. We pray that you would bless us in every way possible. We pray that your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, might come down upon us, Almighty God, and upon those elements that we might sanctify for the purpose of remembering Christ, even as we engage in a love feast this day, appreciating the broken body and the blood of our Lord. And even as we especially remember the other part of that whole picture, which is the risen life that Christ has, represents and grants to each of us. Thank you for the eternal life that you've gifted to us and help us to bless your holy name in all that we do this day and henceforth. And now may the blessing of Almighty God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide upon you this day and evermore. Amen.